let's see how we're going to go around this door here. Just the same way. So don't be afraid to use your paintbrush both directions. And any holes that, that you encounter, try to get some of the uh, material out of them. Not too much. It might have a tendency to want to uh, dry white. Okay. Now see how the door is up against the wall. I can close the door when I'm doing this room, or I may end up deciding to have it open. If I end up deciding to have it open, then I need to come out far enough so that when I do my paint roller, I can just leave this door open. I don't have to mess with it. I can come out this far. In fact, let's do that. Okay. So I'm going to first close the door. And start cutting this in just like normal. So you don't have to be a professional painter to do this, okay? Slide right on. Now I can come out further. That, just with the paintbrush. Gonna open the door and check it. Boy, this paintbrush keeps wanting to slide right into the material. I have to run it sideways. See, this has a tendency to just slide straight down. So when I get down, I'll put it sideways. Okay, I've got the door closed, opened, however you want to say it. And I'm not this far. Okay, that's plenty. So I'm going to leave that right like that. Now, in this room, I don't have to worry about moving that door ever, do I? Okay. I like using my little floor mat, my little knee pad, as it were. Okay, so now I'm going to run it sideways, backhanding it up against the wall. Backhanded again, just take it and slide it up to the wall and across. Now I'm going to, you see there, I just flipped it around. And I'm going to use that tip, set it here, and kind of wiggle it in there and go across. As I'm going across, see, I get it in there kind of at an angle but flat. Now I can lift that up a little bit and go right along the base. Curve it along in there. Got plenty on there. I'm gonna look where the tack strip was and maybe dab out a little bit of the sealer. You know, if you get a little bit in there, it'll still dry fine. You just don't want to get a half inch of puddle in one of those holes. It could dry white. Okay, we want everything to dry clear, don't we? Yes, indeed. Okay. I lift up the paintbrush because I, because I want to put as much material on my paintbrush without it dripping as I can. I don't want to wipe too much off because then I have to keep dipping in there more, okay? Just like that. Go back and get some of that drippings out of there. That puts a little bit extra on my paintbrush and I can kind of blend this in like that and go on to the next. You'll get good at this, trust me. When you get done with this, you're going to want to do your next room, your next room. You're going to, you're going to start wanting to find projects to do so that you can show off your handiwork per se. This is a bedroom little guest room and man this floor is going to really look nice once the furniture gets back in here and stuff. 
Could you imagine having this as a kid's room, let's say, or, or your den, or playroom, whatever, basement. off the rest of this room here. See, because I'm right-handed, that's why I like to go from right to left, because I can, it just gives me a more natural way to do it. And that's kind of how I clean, scrape floors. I do lot, lots of things like that. Okay. Plenty of light because you want to. Last thing you want to do is, is think you've got to cut in and then miss an area because you didn't have a light on your project. Okay? And for construction lights, if you do get one, which I highly recommend, you know that already, I would get the 500 watt as opposed to the 300 or the 250. Okay? The 500 takes a little bit more energy, obviously, to run, but that's okay. I don't mind that part of it. I want as much light as possible on my project, and I don't have to move the light around as much. Okay, there. That's where I started, and that's where I'm finishing in this room. Now, this room is ready for my paint roller. But until, before I do that, obviously, I got more rooms to cut in. And I've got a hallway. I've got a hallway here to still cut in. I've got a closet. I've got a closet here to do. And after that, I've got this main room to do here. Yeah, I got probably a good, oh, I don't know, 30 minutes, 40 minutes to to cut all this floor in before I get out to the paint roller. All right. Once you get done with one room and you think you're all done, just stand up. Just stand up and kind of look at it. See if you've got any holes where the, where the nail holes were. And if you see too much buildup, just walk around and kind of dab it a little bit. I don't think you really have to do this, but if you're not mindful of it, you might, you might fill one of those holes up all the way and then it dries white, okay? And once you do it the first time as you're cutting in, then some of the, some of the surrounding sealer could run down the edges and fill that hole up just a hair. So some sealers are different than others. Some sealers, you can put a quarter inch of of sealer on there and not have an issue. You get another type of sealer and you put it on there and son of a gun, there's a white spot, there's a white spot, there's a white spot after the fact. And you don't want to go around and start digging those out and then having to put some more sealer on later, you know, when you get done with the project. I mean, that's a possibility too. But the idea is once you get done with one part of the project, you shouldn't have to go back. <laughs> 